Hello, this screencast demonstrates the Python 3 format string syntax. We'll start the IPython 3 shell, and uh, despite the Python 3 format string syntax is, in my opinion, the best way of formatting string output, we'll still start out by, by showing basic ways that string formatting could be done in the past. So you could have written value colon and then percent %d, and the percent %d was replaced by an integral number, and the number in this case is 3. So the 3 will be used to replace this percent %d. And the string here is separated with a percentage sign. We could use the same, of course, with uh, multiple variables, say x colon percent %d, y colon percent %d. And uh, in this case, multiple variables have to be put into a tuple, 3 comma, say, minus 1, and hit enter. And uh, 3 is used for the first percent %d and the minus 1 for the second percent %d. You could also use the print function to say value colon and not put a space here, but say a comma. And uh, the print function you will print one argument after the other. So it will first print the value string. Then it will insert a space. And then it will print this here converted to a string. So it will also print value colon 3. Or we could store the result of uh, combining a text value with an integer. Here I need the space again. I cannot simply add an integer to a string, but I have to convert it to a string first. So I still get the same result, value colon 3. This is how string formatting has been done in the past, past here and there. And uh, I highly recommend using the new format function, which, uh, which is nicely documented in the official Python documentation, which is also where I got most of my examples from. I will use a uh, copy and paste so I can save myself some typing. Here we have a print. Then we have in curly braces. This is the first argument. This is the second argument to be replaced. And this is the third part to be replaced. The string is this here, so it's delimited here and here. And now we use this string's format function, call.format, and the first argument of the format function will go into the first curly braces here. The second one into the second, which is already clearly marked by the index 1, and the last argument will go into the curly braces with the index 2. Let's print this ABC. This is just as we would expect it. We can also store the result of this in a variable. So we can simply use exactly the same as above, the string here and its format function, and assign it to a variable. I'm doing this, print text, and it's still what is expected. If we want to use the parameters in the order they are specified in the format function, we can save ourselves some typing and don't have to add the 0, 1, and 2 here. So we can simply use curly braces, curly braces, and curly braces. And the first pair is replaced by the A, the second pair by the B, and the third pair by the C. It's printed out, and it works nicely. We can, if you want to, however, use the numbering in the curly braces to change the order of the arguments. So in this case, the last argument at index 2, the C, will be replaced here. The B will be in the middle, and the A will be last, because the A is the first argument here and has the index 0 here. Let's print this. It's CBA. And we can also use uh, the arguments more than once. So in this case, we have 0, 1, and 0. So 0 is Abra, and 1 is going to be replaced by this and the zero will be replaced again by this. And surprise, it's going to be abracadabra, which is yet another example I got from the official Python documentation. But one thing I believe is even nicer is that instead of using numbers here, we can use names and keyword parameters. We'll delete my screen here with Control L. Oop. And uh, Let's have a look at the first example. Here I have a string. And the string starts here. Oop. The string starts here and ends here. 
and the first curly braces has a keyword latitude and the second longitude and the format function now has to specify keyword parameters. The first parameter here, latitude, defines a string and this string here, the 37.24n, will be replaced here and the longitude one, this one here, will be put here. And now of course the order of the arguments does not matter anymore. Let's have a look and it's just what we would expect here. Now we can also use an own dictionary if you offer if you already know how to work with these. So we can define a dictionary by starting curly braces here and ending them here. And the dictionary has two pairs. It has latitude is 37 and longitude is minus 115.81 west. And now we can uh, use a slightly more compact form for printing a string. So we can now use coordinates is latitude comma longitude and instead of typing the keyword parameters we use dictionary unpacking that means we use the dictionary code that we defined here and the two stars here means unpack the dictionary so that each pair here is going to be a keyword parameter so the first pair will be keyword parameter latitude set to this value and the second will be keyword parameter longitude set to that value so we get exactly the same output as above and uh, one thing I, I really like for debugging and printing out different local variables is that we can use um, a function called local which returns as a dictionary with all kinds of local variables I'm defining a few here so latitude is set now and uh, longitude is set as well and uh, now I can do the following I can say coordinates is and then the first one is latitude the second one is longitude and here I use this locals function which returns me a dictionary with all the local variables this dictionary is unpacked and so I get a series of keyword parameters among others latitude set to this longitude set to that chord set to this but all the keyword parameters not used by these curly braces will be silently discarded. So I can use this and it works as well. Then I can do all kinds of formatting but I, I really uh, encourage you not to learn everything by heart just look it up in the Python documentation when you need it. So here we have we have curly braces and here we add some formatting detail that says make a 30 character wide string and write a line it. So this text here will be right aligned in a 30 character long string. And that's what happens here. Of course I can also center or left align it. Here is an example for centering. I replace the right align character, this one here, with the centering character. And it also works as expected. I'm cleaning my screen now with Ctrl L. One other thing we can do is we can uh, we can uh, use numbers in different uh, uh, formattings. If you're doing computer science, you're probably into hexadecimal numbers, octal numbers, binary numbers, and so on. And Python can nicely print them by simply specifying one format character. Colon X means hexadecimal, colon O means print the number as octal, and colon B means print the number as binary. Now I hit enter and the number 42 will first be printed as decimal and then as hexadecimal, octal and binary. There it is, 42 and here we got it as hex value, as octal value and as binary. However, if, if uh, we want the hex values marked with the leading 0x or the octal with the 0o, we have to have add a number sign before the x or a number sign before the o. If you now print this we'll get 0x2a or 0 and 0b for binary. Now let's move on to formatting dimes at dates and times. I'm importing the date time library and I can use the date time library and this is now a very simple example. Here I'm formatting date time, date time now which is this time, this day and uh, it will be as a whole formatted in the first parameter here. So this is today, 
when I recorded this. And of course I can add some specifiers to say how I want this to look. For example, I can say colon and then percent %y is year, month, date, and only the year, month, date part of the date time, date time now will be used, so I get 2014-0707. If you're doing math, you're probably having to do a lot with complex numbers, and uh, let's define one here, say complex number 3 minus 5j. Now we can we can print a complex number in uh, different ways. We can print the complex number as a whole. This is what I'm doing here. The complex number will be printed as a whole here. But I can also print only the real part by saying first argument dot real or only the complex part, uh, the imagine <coughs> imaginary part by saying whoop, Oh, this didn't work. Let's do the same again. So the real part and the imaginary part is dot iMac. Now let's format this. This is the whole number here. The real part is only the three and the imaginary part is only the minus 5. I can also access this part of a tuple. Let's define a tuple coord equals 3,5 and print out the tuple. So here we access the tuple's first value as take the first argument's first value, simply indexing the tuple and here I index the tuple again to access the 5 of the tuple. The same also works for dictionaries. I'm defining a simple dictionary now containing two keys y for yes and n for no and if I want to access parts of the dictionary I must be careful I'm not uh, using string delimiters I simply use the key right away here so I use square brackets and the key. So I will get, uh, instead of this argument, I will get the yes string here. Because the first argument is this dictionary and of this dictionary I take the y key. And yes, that's what it is. And I can also use a somewhat more complex um, resolutions. I can, for example, access access object oops uh, object members let's define a very basic object self x y self dot x comma self dot y equals x comma y and another function def string of self return so now here what I'm doing is I I set the keyword self to self which represents uh, the current object now we can access all of the object's members by saying self.x or self.y in the string formatting function here let's test this out show me a string of point 5 comma minus 3 and we get 0 0.5 comma minus 3 because self.x is the fiver and self.y is replaced by the minus 3. Now this is the end of this tutorial and remember that most of the examples were taken from the official Python documentation and it's really really worth having a look. And uh, I'm going to show you where the examples come from. It's from docs.python.org slash 3 for Python 3 and then library, string and so on and so forth. I'm opening this here. I exit IPython and we'll open this in a small browser. Now here you see just the examples that I entered up there. 
Have a look at this documentation docs.python.org slash three. This is the end of the screencast. Have fun putting your new knowledge into practice.